Hello everybody, this is Undead Viking, and welcome to another installment of my review series known as a Video Review a Week. Um, that's probably a misnamed uh, series at this point due to the fact that I haven't been able to do one of these uh, every week like I had in the past. Um, still trying to catch up on a backlog of reviews, still trying to figure out how to juggle, uh, you know, having that extra kid at home and and uh, you know, finding time to do these things. Um, uh, one of my New Year's resolutions is actually to get back on the wagon and start uh, turning these out uh, more regularly. Hopefully, uh, once per week and maybe even more. So uh, bear with me, and I do apologize, and I appreciate um, everybody being patient with that. So uh, this is going to be the last uh, board game review of the year 2011. Uh, I will have uh, another top 10 games of the year that will be in the video after this one. And and I, I should probably get that online um, fairly close to uh, you know the, the very beginning of the new year. Um, if you've watched some of my other reviews, uh, you may have watched my Urban Sprawl review. And uh, the title of that, of course, you know, very, very catchy that this was the, I said that was the game of the year. And... Um, I alluded in that review to the fact that there haven't been a lot of games that, uh, in this year, uh, that have just really stood up and, you know, like, smacked me in the mouth and, and like, uh, basically made me realize, wow, you know, this is, this is a really good game. And, you know, I don't know why that is. I mean, it could just be a, a, an off year uh, for games. It, it could just be me. Um, it could be a combination of, of many things. Uh, however, I, I did also allude in the comments of that, of that uh, video uh, on Board Game Geek um, that there were a few games out there uh, that I was really, really uh, looking forward to playing. Uh, you know, the hype and all the stuff that I read about them and everything like that. I, I was excited to see uh, published work, and uh, I said, quite possibly, you know, uh, some one of these games that, that that's coming out that I'm really excited to play could supplant uh, Urban Sprawl as my game of the year. And uh, I, I kind of left that vague and mysterious, but um, one uh, such game that I thought might take that place uh, is this Eclipse. Now. Um, if you are brand new to the board game world, uh, and brand new to the board game world in the last, like, six months, you, you maybe you know nothing about this game. Um, Eclipse, as you can probably guess uh, by the cover art, uh, is a game about space uh, exploration, expansion, uh, and, uh, you know, combat. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's an attempt to make a game. Uh, that uh, is much like the old uh, turn-based strategy computer games, like a Master of Orion. Um, each player uh, plays a space empire, either um, a, in the basic game, uh, there's a bunch of uh, humans, and they, they're all pretty much the same. No, they are the same. It's just they're different factions. And in the advanced game, um, you're allowed to play uh, some alien races, and they have special abilities and what have you. And, um, uh, basically, uh, you, you, you have this, this faction or this alien race, uh, and you are starting to expand, uh, out into space and taking over the star systems, and theoretically, you will be, um, butting heads, uh, with other, uh, space races, uh, namely the other players, uh, as, uh, as, you know, space starts to run out. And, and you you start uh, fighting over valuable star systems with with, with valuable uh, planets that will give you the resources to win the game. It is a victory point game. Um, it isn't like a conquest game where you have to kill everybody else off. Uh, though theoretically, if you did that, you'd win the game. Um, but it is a victory point game. Uh, you gain victory points for uh, doing research uh, into different technologies, uh, for winning combats. You get uh, you get victory points. Um, for building uh, monoliths, uh, you you uh, these basically these giant uh, space structures, uh, you can get uh, victory points. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different uh, ways uh, to gain uh, those, those all important victory points. 
and um, and at the end of the game, after a certain number of turns, nine turns, so the game is a time limit to it. Um, you determine the winners by by the victory points of each each faction or each uh, race. Now, um, the nuts and bolts of the game is it's for two to six people. I, I have played it with every uh, spectrum of player, and it takes about thirty minutes per player uh, to play the game. Uh, mm -hmm. It is suggested for people that are older, uh, fourteen or older. Although I can see you know you know uh, kids being able to play this with some adult uh, help. And uh, I think they could grasp it pretty well, mostly due to the fact that I think the the rule book um, does an incredibly good job at, at teaching the rules of the game. But I'll give you more of that as far as my conclusion goes. Uh, I'm going to do one of my lengthy uh, rules overviews uh, that uh, you may uh, be accustomed to if you watch these videos. So I do apologize for that. Um, you can always skip ahead, of course, and just go right to my conclusion. Uh, and that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you how you play the game. I'm going to show you how you, uh, you know, how you build spaceships. I'm going to show you how you upgrade your spaceships. I'm going to show how you uh, do research. I'm going to show you how you uh, explore uh, the uh, different sectors of space and how you move into there and how you uh, take those over and how combat works and, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to try to show you every aspect of the game or very close to every aspect of the game. So... Hopefully, um, you'll get an idea of uh, either A, if you own the game and you haven't read the rules and you want to learn how to play the game, you can do that. Or B, if you're on the fence and you're trying to decide if this is a game for you, you can maybe figure that out by watching those rules. Now, I do apologize. This game is extremely tough to get a hold of right now. Uh, they've completely sold out their first print run, and, I mean, it's gone. I mean, there's, there's a few uh, random copies kind of scattered out there. Uh, but you're probably going to end up paying through the teeth, uh, you know, for them. Um, I, I got my copy through Boards and Bits. It was they're they're cool enough to hold a copy for me, and you know, and but I, I know there's some retailers and they've kind of jacked up the prices a bit, and you know, well, free market economy, right? You know, uh, but um, I know they're doing another print run, and so the game should be coming out again, and those prices should. Uh, you know, move back to a normal pr uh, price range uh, when that happens. So, if you're patient and you decide this is something you want, uh, you do have that venue available to you once uh, the next print run is made. So, I do apologize. I don't like doing a review for a game that, um, you know, you can't readily get uh, easily. Um, because, I mean, I don't... I mean, the purpose of a review is, is to, like, kind of let you know whether or not you want to buy a game. I don't want the review to be like, hey, look at this awesome game that you can't own. You know, that's not, that's not that fun. Um, you know, there, there's several other games I could have done for my last review of 2011. Um, but this one is just something I've, I've, I've been really, really interested in for a long time. When I first read about it on Board Game Geek, uh, I remember I, 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 I talked to the creator. I, I discussed certain aspects of the game with them. I was really, really excited for this to come out. And um, I was I was really looking forward to playing it. And it just it, it's, it feels like a really good uh, bookend. Uh, for my 2011 year. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's dive into the rules and the gameplay of uh, Eclipse, and then, um, and then I'll tell you exactly uh, what I think of the game. All right, let's do this. All right, uh, just for starters, uh, just so you know, when I got ready to do this review and I was going to go over the rules, um, it took me a while to, like, in my head, uh, figure out how I wanted to approach this. So uh, there's a lot going on. So I'm, I'm going to just kind of try to chunk this out, the, the rules, and try to explain this as best as I can. Um, for starters, I'm going to show you the player boards. Um, these are really cool. You'll notice this mustachioed fellow over here. And um, there's a little person there and it tells you who are this is the Terran directorate and this is the human this is the human faction on on the backs of these uh, on same thing right now of course now you have the Eridani Empire so it's it's like a, a different race it's a it's an alien race and there are six of these you know one for each uh, you know color you know and and so like and they have as you know stated before there's there's different races on each side. Now, it goes without saying that probably because of the fact that the, the alien races start with different resources and, and different starter starting um, attributes, uh, and whereas the humans are all pretty much the same, they're just different colors, um, 
yeah, playing the humans for the first game, probably a good idea. If, if you're a uh, well-versed in, in board games, you probably can start off with the enemies right away. But I just wanted to show you these are really nice, and I'm going to show you a close-up of the yellow board here. And I just I, I use the humans just because I'm just gonna you know present the game in, in its basic format. Um, quick explanation: up here are your uh, different uh, ship blueprints. You can kind of tell uh, this is the small interceptors and the cruisers, uh, dreadnought, and your starbase. Uh, as you improve these, you will replace these locations on the ship with different. Uh, uh, advancements that that you'll increase. Um, sometimes they'll just be something very simple, like you know, say, whoop, say like this this ion cannon. So it's a, it's another weapon, and you'll just you know you you'll upgrade and you'll just you know so have another weapon such as that. Later on, through research, you'll gain access to bigger and better uh, uh, you know, parts for your weapon, you know, increased drive so your ship can move faster, um, you know, computers that will allow you to uh, have, you know, have greater initiative in combat and also be able to hit better, uh, increased armor and shields on, on, the, on the, uh, the structures and, and so on and so forth. And um, th those work exactly the same. As you, as you upgrade them, you'll place them on the blueprints. Uh, you'll notice over here, um, this is spots for both, um, if you ever get into a treaty with another player, uh, they'll be placing one of their people over here, and I'll explain that when I explain the, uh, the negotiation or, or the um, diplomacy part of the game. Um, also, um, that's where you will be placing um, rewards you get when you actually are involved in combat when you to, to kind of push people towards being in combat and and having uh, uh, space battles because this game could you could turtle pretty easily I mean you could just kind of set up a good defense and and just kind of stay stay to yourself but um, it promotes people fighting because even if you lose a combat you still get to uh, draw what's called a reputation uh, marker out of this bag and these reputation markers, uh, they're blank on one side, and on the other side they have a victory point total. And then as you gain these, you know, like after you win a battle, like or lose a battle, you'll see, uh, depending on how well you did, you'll get to draw a certain number of these chits out of this bag, and then you get to look at them all and you get to keep one. And then you place that one down over here. Now you'll notice that like this one does not have a shield shape, so you gotta make sure that since this is a shield shape, um, you're placing that on one that does. And so the other players can't see that, they don't know how many victory points you have over here. And so that's kind of like one of those things where if you see somebody that's filled out these with these little black shields, you're like, well, geez, you know, he, he could have a lot of points over there, I don't know, maybe they're all ones, maybe they're fours, who knows. Um, the diplomacy uh, counters look like this. And this is this person, so you wouldn't be placing uh, this one on your own, but like another player, uh, when they, they, you know, you have a diplomacy action and you've come to decide that neither of you are going to attack each other, um, you place that uh, where there is a spot available. Now, it should be noted that, uh, you know, they, they, and I'll, I'll touch on this again, but when you, once these are on there, once somebody has a treaty with you and they place that on uh, your spot, you'll notice that this is worth a victory point too, um, it, it doesn't go away unless you actually attack the other person. You can't just call off your treaty. Uh, you actually have to go and uh, attack them uh, and, and you know by moving into their area or actually trying to blow their ships up and so on and so forth. Now, now I'm going to talk about, um, this isn't a scoring track along the egg, this is actually um, the resources that you're collecting each and every turn that you play the game. Um, it's, it's your income, basically, in both research, goods, and money. And they have these three barrels, and I, I'm not trying to nitpick, but I mean, this is supposed to be orange, but you notice it's very, very close to the same color as that brown, so it's, sometimes it's kind of tough. Obviously, the pink is very obvious. The pink is research, uh, the brown is production, and the orange is money. And so there's these little hash marks there letting you know where these uh, go at the beginning of the game, so that's what your starting income is. And as you take over other civilizations and other planets, uh, depending on the planet type, you know, these will move, these will increase and move down because of the fact, and this is one of the really, really cool things about the game. These cubes here, these yellow cubes, are your citizens, your settlers, your uh, colonists, if you will. 
And it's kind of tough to tell here, and I apologize for that, but there is an orange, a pink, and a brown here. And as these people move off and colonize, and you'll take these off and you'll place them on the board, on the hexes, you'll notice that underneath there's these larger numbers. And as these people go and they, they, they habitat, habitate these, these planets that are, give you research or money or goods, this will slowly increase. And so when you, you'll notice, okay, now my income for this, because I've, I've, I've sent these people off to, to uh, you know, be colonists and create these goods for me. Now this is what I'm creating every turn as far as, uh, you know, my, my, my goods and my money and so forth go. And so really, really cool. I, I, it's so simple yet, yet innovative. I, I mean, I'm sure that maybe there is a game out there that does something very similar to it, but I mean, I just haven't either, I can't remember it in a game that I've played or I haven't encountered yet. I, I just really like that. Now, Finally, we're getting to the action portion of the board that you have in front of you. Now, each person has this, and you'll notice that there's these little circles here uh, that are the actions that you can take. And those are explore, uh, influence, uh, research, upgrade, build, and move. Now, I'll explain those in more detail, but when your turns are coming, and like whoever the first player is, they take their action, the next player clockwise takes their action, and so on and so forth. Um, you will take these discs and you'll just move them to the action that you're going to take. Now, you can take the same action over and over again. So don't just because you cover it up, it doesn't mean that you don't get to take the action. But you'll notice there's this number here, and it's orange, which is, of course, your money. Right now, because I've taken that action at the end of my turn, if I were to end my turn now and not take any other actions uh, you know, for this round of the game, um, it isn't costing me any money. There's, there's no cost to what I've done. But let's say I decided I was going to build that turn. You know, and there's a minus one. So now, after this turn's done, it's going to be costing me one money to be able to pull that out, to do what I did. And then as you're doing more and more actions, you'll notice that the cost for each thing that you're doing increases. So, like, if you've done all that, at the end of the turn, you better make sure that you have the income and you have the money for to pay off ten. You know, and, and to make sure that you're actually able to do whatever you're doing. Now, as an added wrinkle, and I'm just going to show you uh, one of just a hex, and I'll explain the, the, the hexes on the board. But as an added wrinkle, you'll see that this is a standard hex that's on the board. Um, you'll see that there is uh, like a victory point total here as far as, uh, you know, if you control it, you'll see that there's some planets here, and you'll notice that there's these different colors. And like, you know, as I said before, you know, if you colonize them, you're placing them like that and so on and so forth, and so you know that, you know, you're producing that particular uh, product. And um, when you take over a spot, you're actually taking one of your discs and you're placing it on the sector. And so when you take over another one, another hex, you take another and you place that on the sector. And as this continues, you, you're, you're actually like losing, if you notice, actions here to be able to control more areas of the world. So you're balancing, I need the income, I need to take over these places, and I need to, to, to be running these sectors of space so, so I can actually improve my colony, improve my faction, but I'm also, slowly but surely, I'm costing myself more and more money by the more area that I control. It's kind of like a bureaucracy at work, if you will. So I... <laughs> really cool. I just, I totally love that. I mean, it's just like, like I said, maybe there's a game out there that's done something very much like this and I just haven't played it yet, but, um, it, it's just, it, it was so slick and so innovative for me. I just, I, I, I was just blown away the first time I played it. So, um, that's the player board. Uh, and like I said, I, I will explain all the actions here in just a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure that you saw this and saw just how really cool and, and awesome this is to kind of sit in front of you as you're playing the game. And, um, and oh, I, I forgot one really major thing. I do apologize. Um, the research uh, area of the board, as you uh, research um, different technologies, I'm just grabbing some research tiles at random here. And uh, you'll notice that here, this is like, you know, the, the brow, and this is, there, there's three different sets. And like you'll notice, like on on the actual research tiles, you'll notice like there's a symbol on the bottom that will tell you which side they go on. So, like you know, let's say I, I researched uh, gauze shield there, and um, this one you notice has a star. So I researched that, and you'll notice that 
each um, time that you, you, each one of these these tiles has a cost on it. And there's there's a, there's a number and then a slash and then a number. So this one's two and two, meaning it's when you do a research, it's costing you two of your pink resource to to research it. But as you're placing uh, these down on these locations you'll notice that there's these numbers over here that actually is like minus two, minus two, and as you increase your research in a given field, you get to deduct this number from the cost of the research uh, to, to get that particular uh, the advancement. So like you notice that here we have fusion drive, you can see that it is a four three. Now the second number, what that means, that's the that's the absolute minimum that you'll pay for this. You can't ever get something down to so it costs zero, and you can just take it. So normally this would cost four if I didn't have anything at all in like the star level here. It's on the bottom, and but it says three. So if you notice, I've I've covered up this spot. I see here it says minus two, so I can deduct two from the cost to research this. Four minus two would be two, but you notice that there's a three there, so the lowest I can get it down to is three. So if I decided to research this fusion drive, I would go ahead and I would place that down there, and it would only cost me one. And you also notice that as you get more and more research, they're worth victory points at the end too as well. All right, sorry I forgot to mention that, but I got to it. So just another really, really, really cool awesome part of this player board that just works oh so well and I, it should be noted that like as you're moving these these colonists off when, when they you know it's very easy if you decide to uncolonize a planet or either by choice or by the fact that somebody decides to uh, you know neutron bomb your people off this off the face of the planet they just go right back on here you don't lose them permanently and so that that is a constant sliding scale as far as what your uh, your, your your income is Alright, I'm going to show you the actual, like, the, the kind of communal player board that is, uh, that, that, that shows the research tiles and some other things really quickly. Alright, here we go, let's do that. Alright, I do apologize, I am going to show you the, the, uh, the research uh, tree and, and, and what have you, the, the, the communal player board, but I, did, I forgot to show one very important thing. Um, each player uh, gets one of these. It's just a little card that has the actions on it and it tells you just kind of like what each of these do and you know, and it's, it's you know, do you need it? Probably not, but if not for the fact that as the, as the, the as the turns go, you, you take your action and then the next person goes, the next person goes, the next person goes. And eventually, like, you just decide you don't want to do anything anymore, and you'll, you'll pass. You'll say, I'm done. However, when you pass, what you do is you turn this over. And now, see, it says passed up on the top. And it actually shows in the action phase, and then you do your combat phase, and upkeep, and cleanup, and what have you. But you'll notice that down here it says reactions. And it has upgrade, build, and move, which are actions. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Even though you've passed... If the turn gets back to you on the on your turn, which would normally be your time to choose an action, if as long as everybody else hasn't passed, you can take one of your discs and you can do one of these three actions. You can go, I'm gonna I'm gonna move. Now these aren't as good as as the normal actions, like like upgrade. Normally you'd be able to take two uh, two upgrades, you know, and 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 uh, two tiles to uh, add to your blueprints. To upgrade, um, but in this case, unfortunately, you're only able to do one. You know, and the same thing with you know build, it's less, and also like moving. Instead of moving like uh, three ships, you can only move one of your ships and things like that. But you are able to continue taking actions as long as it gets back to you on the other side of the table. Now, if everybody passes, then it gets back to you. Then obviously, you can't do anything. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why, why would I pass? You know, I mean, if I want to do these actions, why wouldn't I do the, the better actions? Because I'm not really getting anything. I mean, because these still cost you. You're still taking these cues off your player board. Well, the first person that passes gets the first player marker and gets to act first the next next uh, the next turn of the game. So. It, it can be very important if there's like perhaps research you want that you don't want somebody else to get for you. Uh, if there's a, a, a prime spot uh, as far as a star system goes that you want to get to for anybody else to take over. Things like that. So sometimes making sure that you pass is very, very important so you can make sure you get that first action. All right, now I'll show you uh, the, the communal player board with the tech tree and everything else. Sorry about that. 
All right, here we go. Uh, this is the communal board. You kind of put this off to the side because it can't really go on the center of the board because that's where all your star systems are going to be. But um, this is the communal board that you uh, will be looking at and you'll be uh, uh, using to keep track of the turns. Uh, you, there's, a, there's a turn marker. Yeah, wait. All right, here we go. Uh, this is the communal board that is part of you know, your tech tree. It, it, it has it's a, got places for important parts that you'll be using during the game. Um, it has parts for like all the different uh, ship parts that you, everybody has access to at the beginning of the game right over here that you can use to upgrade things. And also as, as your research uh, is successful, uh, you're able to take these expanded research uh, upgrades that are in here as well. Um, it also has uh, like this little track here. Um, these are the uh, reputation marker uh, that, that you get to that you get to draw. You know, so like basically the, these are the little outlines of the different ships that you can possibly destroy. So like let's say you were in a combat and you were able to destroy an interceptor, which is this one, and a, and a star base, which is that one. You'll notice that both of those are worth one shit. So if you said that's what I that's what I was able to do during the combat. All right, then you get to draw two out of that bag and keep one. Um, over here, uh, these are the ancient ships. These are uh, ancient uh, automated aliens, pirates, something. Uh, it's kind of vague in the rules. I, I, maybe it's I didn't see it, but um, sometimes an unexplored sector of space will have these, and um, you'll have to defeat them if you want to, uh, you know, be able to take over that particular location. Uh, these right here are these tokens that are they basically explore tokens. Uh, sometimes when you turn over a tile, it'll tell you to put one of these on that tile. And you'll notice it says two victory points on this side. Now on the reverse side, there's a bonus. In this case, this bonus here is, you know, plus eight money. Now, if you if the first person to take over that sector of space and has one of these on it, you get to take it, you look at it, and you say, okay, which do I want? Do I want do I want the money or do I want the victory points? And then you make your make your mind. If you take the money, it's a one-time thing. And there's other things in there too, like research and maybe a free ship and things like that. And and then or you just if you take the the points, you just put this off to the side, and you can have as many of these as you want as long as you keep investing in those sectors of space. Um, there is a nice little game round. Uh, explanation here and of course up here is the, the turn marker for the games uh, so as, as the game only lasts nine turns so as the game progresses this just keeps track of which turn of the game it is now then you'll notice up here these are the different techs and there's nothing on there right now there's there's no there's there's none of those little markers well at the beginning of the game depending on how many players there are you have this bag and you randomly draw uh, a, a certain number of technologies and yeah, you know, so I'll just I'll just grab a handful here, and then whoever's in charge of this, they just look at them, and like we have advanced labs, and and then they just take the time to you know place these on on the particular locations uh, where they're located, uh, you know, and of course I can never find them, so I, usually I give this job to somebody else because my my sight recognition is not always the best, but you can see how this works. You know, you're placing these, and these particular uh, advancements are available if somebody's able to purchase them, and they stay on here until they're actually purchased and taken off of the board uh, by whoever manages to grab them. Now, you don't have to take these in order, obviously. Uh, obviously, the ones over here cost less uh, than the ones uh, towards the the end, but. Um, <laughs> If you want to jump ahead and, and if you can afford it, take tachyon source over over you know a face shield or a plasma cannon, you know that's completely up to you and you have that option available to you. Now, once these are taken off, they take them off and see here's even a repeat. There's two plasma cannons. Once they're taken off, somebody takes it and it's gone. So sometimes, like you'll have your eye on on a on a research. Like let's say you have your eye on plasma cannon. And but you're acting fourth, you're acting last in the round. Well, what if if the second player does research and takes it? You're like, okay, please, third player doesn't don't take that. And the third player goes, you know what? I want a plasma cannon too, and they take that, and now it's gone. You aren't able to research that particular technology. So, it 
it, it's one of those things where it it isn't it isn't infinite. You know, once these are out here, it isn't like anybody can grab them. Um, you, sometimes you, you've got to grab it while the getting's good. And sometimes you'll be left out in the cold. And it is a random thing. It, you know, some people don't really like that. But I do. I like the fact that I can't script out the game as far as what's going to be available at any given time. I can have a great strategy that says, well, if I, if I just had, you know, a really, really good shielding on my ships, this would really perfectly. Well, I might sit there for a long time waiting for that to show up. And most likely I'm not going to be able to. As I said, there's only a certain number of rounds, uh, you know, for the game to, to last. So you're going to have to adapt your strategy and change it as, as, as this research sees fit. And it isn't just ship upgrades either. Um, there are things on here that will allow you uh, to, uh, like, here we have, like, advanced uh, economy and advanced labs, as I said. On some of these markers, you'll notice that these these locations, you'll see there's orange and then there's a little star on them. Well, the ones with the star, you can't use until you get the ability to use the advanced one. So advanced labs allows you to use the stars on the, the, the research or the, the science uh, stars on these locations. So, you know, there's things like that that will also, you know, help you out immensely, you know, that have nothing to do with your spaceships. But um, I really like this. I, I, I like the fact that this is, it's easy to understand, it's easy to tell. And, and also, you'll notice that it, it's very, um, it, it, it tells you exactly what you need at a glance. Uh, you know, a lot of times, like, there's a lot of games that, like, you know, oh, geez, how many, how many tiles do we draw again for four people when we're playing? Well, look in the rules, look in the rules. Well, no, you don't need to do that because you'll notice that down here it actually just tells you. There's a little thing. With, with two people, you draw four tiles. With three people, you draw six. And with four people, you draw seven. So, you know, it's little things like that that, that people, that when, when games take the time to add them uh, to the functionality of, of, of the components, that it just makes the game experience that much more pleasurable. All right, so let's move on to the actions, and I'm going to try to explain those to you as, as, as best as I can. Okay, I've set up a starting uh three-player game, just, just to, so I can show you the different actions that you can take. Um, I'm going to just go through these, and they're, they're really simple, and the really nice thing about this is after you've played the game, at least like a round, uh, full turn, if you will, um, it's going to be very, very simple, and this is going to be very easy for you to grasp. But let's let's start off. Um, the first action that a lot of people are going to do, especially right at the beginning of the game, is exploring. Now, this goes against kind of like if you played a lot of uh, 4X games on your computer, um, the whole thing, you have to move your ship to the spot to explore it. But you don't have to do that in this game. To explore, all you need to do, if you notice that each of these little starting hexes, there's these little circles on the sides, and those are wormholes. And you can only move through that spot normally. There's a technology that lets you uh, disregard that, but we won't get into that. And so if you do an explore action, what you do is you decide which wormhole you're going to explore from, and then you draw a tile. And then and, and you look at the tile and you decide whether or not it's something you want to place on the board, and then you choose to place it or not. Now, there are three sets of tiles. Um, there's your tiles with a one on them, tiles with a three on them, and let me guess, yes, tiles with a two on them. So, depending on which quadrant of space you, you, you draw from that board. So, like, this right here is the ones. Now, outside of that, it's the twos, and then anything out of that is the threes. Now, it should be noted that when you do explore or you move to different hexes, you can, after you've done the first two circles, you can go anywhere, as long as the wormholes allow you with, with, with the threes. But let's just say yellow is going to explore, they draw a two, and they look at it. Now, there's a lot of stuff on, the, on each one of these, but if you notice, there's these different wormholes, so you have to match up if you place it. In the middle, you see there's this, this shape, the, the square with the rounded end. That means that you're going to be placing uh, one of these tiles on it, if you, if you decide to put it. And you notice there's a skull in there, which means that if you decide to place this tile, you're also going to need to put one of these ancient ships on there. So, yellow decides they're going to place the tile because... You know, there's, it's worth two victory points if they control it. There's three planets there, plus a white planet, which, um, because of the fact that it doesn't uh, have any specific uh, uh, resource attached to it, you can put anything you want there. And so you place one of these. You don't get to look at it at first, obviously. And then you place 
the ship over the top of that. And then yellow looks and whoop, they place that right there. And so then, uh, now, now on their next turn, when it gets around to them, they can decide whether or not they think that their interceptor that they start off with is, is tough enough and they can move it onto that location and then there will be a combat then if, if, if one uh, occurs. Now, you, you, like I said, you have to make sure that these, these match up, you, but once it's placed, you can't move it. So, you can in a way, as long as you draw the right tiles, you can kind of block yourself off from other people, you know, and, and maybe keep yourself uh, segregated from the rest of the board to a certain extent. Now, that's the explore. Now, if you, let's just say, for example, these particular pieces weren't on there and that, that wasn't there. If you explore a tile that doesn't have anything and it can be taken, at that point, uh, you can, if you wish, place one of your influence discs on there, like so, meaning that you've claimed it. And as long as you have colony ships available, and each person uh, in the in normal, you get three of these. Uh, some of the alien races uh, have a different number, but the humans get three. And so you have three of these, and you notice that all it is is a little thing, and it says they can move a cube. God, that clumsy guy. Uh, move a cube onto a location. So when you have these, you if you decide to use them, you just flip them over, and you can do that at any time you turn. It doesn't take an action. And when you flip them over, you take more of your colonists and you place them where you're able. So in this case, uh, yellow, there's this one's the advanced, so I, I remember I went over that earlier. So they only are able to do two, so they, they put two colonists on there. By moving those, obviously they've taken them off your player board, so they've increased. Uh, you know, let's say this is this is the, the orange, that's money, let's say they use pink for that, so then because it's a white one they can use there. And now they've increased their research. And that's Explore, and that's how you uh, create the galaxy, if you will. All right, uh, after the Explore action, uh, we, we're going to move on, and we'll go to Influence. Now, Influence is a little weird, because uh, Influence allows you to kind of move um, your... Your, your your influence discs around and, 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 and trade them off, if you will. Now, it also allows you to take over, say, a star system that's been abandoned. So let's just, I'm just going to place one down. I, this didn't actually occur or whatever. So let's say that and this was over here by blue. And blue uh, controlled uh, this particular hex but they didn't control that one. Let's say somebody else did, or and for whatever reason, and, and they had to abandon it. Maybe they got destroyed, maybe they just moved off, maybe they had to take that influence disc back, or something like that. So blue can use the influence action to either take a disc off of their board and place it on there to take control of it, and then use colony ships to, to colonize planets, or if they have one that they just wanted to abandon, like this one doesn't have any planets on it, and they just figure, well, this one's worth one victory point as well, and it's got planets, so I'll just move that one over to there. That way you're not using up one of your discs that's on your particular uh, player board, and you're not, like, costing yourself more money when the upkeep phase comes around. That's the influence action. Uh, to research, I've already gone over that. Uh, you just look at the research board and you choose the uh, particular uh, upgrade or, or, or technology that you wish and you pay uh, on your player board uh, with the, uh, on the pink uh, resource. And if you upgrade, as I said before, you're allowed to take uh, two ship parts and add that to your, uh, your blueprint. And then building. Now, to build, uh, you have to have production available uh, on your player board, like, and that is the brown resource, and then that allows you to build these cool spaceships. And like, there's these spaceships, and there are the medium-sized ones, and then there's obviously the smaller-sized ones as well. There are also uh, star bases. Once you uh, have the technology, and it should be noted, that humans actually start with the star base technology. And star bases are just these, and you can place these on your your, your spaces that you control. And and you can build, uh, you know, you, as far as your, as long as your production is able to you know, back up what you're trying to uh, to create. Uh, other than after after building, uh, we now get to movement. Now I'm just going to have to fill out uh, the the board a little bit, and I do apologize. I'm, I should have done this earlier, and of course now I'm not getting any that have wormholes that match up, but that'll work. 
and let's see here. There we go. Now movement, uh, you choose to like when you choose to move, you can move uh, three moves uh, worth of actions. Uh, now. Your movement is 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 relegated by the actual like drive of the the, the ship of ship's blueprint. Some some ships have a drive that will allow them to move one space, some two, and then as it gets better and better as you as research technology and upgrade things, they can move further and further. Now you can move the same ship multiple times. So you can take one and you can move it all through. If, if you only got a movement of one, so like um, you know you you can move one and then move this one again for another one. Or, or you can move, you know, one all three times. You know, you can, you know, like for whatever reason, one, two, three. Um, obviously, as, as your as your drives get better and, and, and as you have more movement available, you're able to move more ships. I really like the fact that you're not able to just move your entire fleet, you know, in one move action. You know, because it makes it makes like the actual like placement of the ships on the board much more tactical in, in mind because of the fact that you need to, you know, make sure that you're able to bring what you want and to where you want it to go but but you can't just like just all of a sudden just bring the hammer and drop like five ships on somebody else's spot because you just don't have that capability of moving all those things um yeah movement is is really simple as well the only other thing about movement is is that um if you move into a spot that let's just put this guy here and even though there's a normal here just bear with me so if you have these two ships here and let's say Blue really wants uh, this guy to get to that that sector, but this this ship is blocking him. Now, when you move one into the area like so, this ship now becomes pinned because of the fact that there is this ship here, and so he can't move anywhere. There's going to be a combat. However, the next time you move something through there, because there's only one ship here and they're already engaging, I could stop here to help with the combat if I wanted to, but I can since it isn't pinned. I can move again. And move on further to the other hex, and that's movement. It's 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 pretty simple, but there there is a little little uh, little hijinks, if you will, to it as well. And uh, those are the actions. Now, there's a couple other things uh, I have to show you. Uh, one is very important. That's combat, and I also have to show you how uh, the diplomacy works. All right, let's do that. Okay, diplomacy. This could not be easier. Okay, uh, yellow and green ambassador. So yellow and green are playing. They eventually, uh, two of their sectors of space uh, match up next to each other, and they uh, are now close. They are, they are, they're sharing a wormhole, basically. This doesn't take an action. At any time, if the two players decide, you know what, I won't attack you for the rest of the game, you don't attack me for the rest of the game. Sounds good. Each person gets trades the ambassador. So yellow would give this to green and green would give this to yellow and each of them gets to place one of their population on that so they're increasing their uh you know their production you know their 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 uh, excuse me they they they're increasing uh, whatever they decide this could be money this could be production this could be uh research uh, research money or 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 goods and then they give that to the other person notice that there is a one victory point on there meaning that each person is getting a victory point because you count that up uh, along the side at the end of the game. So you give these to each person and then now you don't have to worry about that person attacking you. However, if anybody ever decides to attack, and this means even if you just fly through the space and don't fight, the person that initiated the contact gets this card. And you notice it says traitor and minus two, meaning this you're going to have minus two points at the end of the game. Plus, Whoever has this card can no longer enter into a diplomatic relation with anybody else in the game. Unless, at some point in the game, somebody else decides to attack somebody else. In which case, you hand this card off and then you are free uh, to, to enter into whatever diplomatic relations you wish to at that point. I like this. I like how this works. And I like the fact that it, it, you can't just, you know, uh, now I've decided I don't want to be your friend and now I'm going to attack you. Once you enter into this diplomatic relation, you're you're in it to win it, if you will. And unless you decide that it is worth it to, uh, you know, claim this card to uh, try to attack that person. All right. Now then, combat. Uh, you waited long enough. So here we have. Let's just. I'm not going to put this on the board just because these can get a little bit cluttered. So 
For whatever reason, blue and green don't like each other, and they've entered into combat with each other. Now then, I don't have the blueprints, I'm not going to show that, but you're just going to have to assume that these have varied blueprints and, and what have you, and they are going to now duke it out. The first thing that happens is that you determine what each ship's, um, you know, uh, turn order is. Uh, each ship will have, uh, due to the size of it, smaller ships move faster, obviously, and plus the, the upgrades and the technology that they have in them, they'll have what's called an initiative score. And the higher the initiative score, the better, meaning that they will get to act first. The first, the, the, the ship that has the highest initiative score gets to go first, and they get to attack first. And then they actually, unlike a lot of games, when you attack somebody, okay, I'll, I'll let you, the, the attacks will go to him. The person that does the attacking gets to decide which ship they're attacking. So, as with any cool game, you get multicolored dice. The, the yellow dice are for when you have ion cannons. The orange dice are for plasma cannons. And the almighty red dice are for animator cannons. A roll of a six always hits. A roll of one always misses. You will adjust the attacks due to advancements. If you have computers that will increase the chance to hit, you get to add that to the roll. A six or higher is a hit. If you have shields, uh, that, that, that they have a minus number, that is the minus to the hit. So you'll be in a lot of situations where some people have shields and the other person won't have any computers and they'll just have to roll a six to hit. Combat goes back and forth until you know either one person is left standing or the person, uh, person decides to do a retreat. If you decide to retreat, you basically say, okay, my guys are retreating. The other side gets one free attack if they don't destroy the ships, they get away as long as they have a safe quadrant or of space uh, to go and run off and hide in. I, I mean, I, I, okay, I can roll some dice if you want, but I mean, you don't have to actually see me act out the combat. I mean, to, to give how it works. One, you know, if if this ship goes first, you roll the dice for that one. If then these two share initiative, those would go. And then if the green dreadnought here goes first, then that one go, and then the blue one. So you notice that combat can be tactical. You can actually take out a ship before it even has a chance to fire, and sometimes you may very well do that. Ships will have hulls that will increase their hit points, and as you take damage, you do will mark that off. If, if after the battle, one of your ships is damaged, it automatically gets fixed at that point. And that's it. That That's how you play Eclipse. That's everything. It goes nine rounds. After nine rounds, nine turns, nine rounds, wherever you want to put it, uh, you, the game ends. You total up victory points. You see who's got the most. And they're declared Emperor of the Galaxy. So, uh, let me tell you exactly what I think of this game. This great game. All right. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to guess that judging from my comments uh, during the, the rules explanation and maybe the gist that you may have got from the introduction that uh, I really like uh, this game. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really, really good. I um, I have a friend, uh, part of my gaming group, uh, Jason, who uh, loves uh, Twilight Imperium. He, he thinks it's just kind of like that bastion of, of, of that that perfect game you know that that he that he you know feels that it's just it's just uh, so great and so perfect and so pure as far as a gaming experience is, is concerned and we've played it i mean we have played the game and and you know i don't i don't mind twilight imperium actually i, I own it i'm not gonna get rid of it anytime soon if ever uh because it is it is a highly enjoyable game however um in my humble opinion and I, maybe it isn't fair to compare the game, but I mean it's hard to like if you, if you if you if you explain to somebody, oh I got a game at home, a board game at home, and this is talking to somebody who knows about board games. Oh, I got this board game at home. It's about uh, space exploration and conquest. You create spaceships and every and you you slowly create the uh, the world by fl you know flipping over hexagons. Oh, it's Twilight Imperium. No, it's 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 Eclipse. You know, I mean, they're not the same game, obviously, but I mean they're they're on the same you know, yardstick, if you will. So maybe it isn't really fair, you know, to compare them, but, you know, it, it's it's hard and, and it's inevitable that they're going to be compared. But, in my opinion, Eclipse is just so much better. Um, and throw that comparison aside and, and just let's, base, let's, let's, let's focus on why I think Eclipse is awesome. Uh, you know, there's so many different things about the game that, that are great. It's hard to, like, touch on all of them. And, and in fact, one of the, one of the really 
awesome things about the game is that there's so many things about the game that, that are great, and then all those things that are great, they kind of just work together perfectly. Um, and just starting off, like, the, the player mat. You know, each person's got that player mat, and, and at a glance, they, they can see exactly where they're at and what the, what's going on uh, with, with their particular, uh, you know, race or their faction. Um, they, can, they can tell, you know, how well they're doing. Uh, they, they, they can see the options available to them. It's just, it's, 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 it's so well made, this game. I, you can tell that, 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 that the creator spent a long time uh, tweaking the game and changing things and, and altering things, you know, and just to make it work so perfectly. The rule book, I mean, you know, we've all, we've all read cruddy rule books uh, for, for games, you know, and you're just like, you read them and it's like, who, who, who read this? This is garbage, you know? And, um, you know, and some game companies, um, and the, more than others, have a, uh, a notoriety, uh, whether it's deserved or not, uh, about poor rule books. And the thing about this Eclipse rule book is, is that literally you can sit down without reading the rules uh, once and you can sit down at a table with three or four of your friends and, and you could learn this game and play as you go very, very easily. I mean, it's going to be slower at the very beginning, but, you know, it's, it's, it's going... After the first turn or two, it just... It clicks. It works. It, it, it's so smooth. It's so slick. Uh, you know, it's just... There's so many things about the game that as I played it, I was like, those little aha moments... When you're when you're sitting there and you're playing it and you're moving your action discs, you know, that not only denote which actions you're taking, but also denote kind of like how much power you have in the galaxy. Because as you're using those discs to claim those sectors of space, you're slowly but surely like you're 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 losing actions. And it's costing you more and more money before you even do anything. It's kind of like, you know, it's like it's like your bureaucracy. Of, of trying to maintain control over these sectors of space is, is like that all the red tape and everything it's costing you money there, there's a there's there's a a figured in negative income just to have your your empire and he, and you think about that you know that makes complete sense you know and it and it's just like and it's perfectly rendered you know by the game and, and by the rules of the game and how the game works. I love the fact that like your your civilians are just these little cubes that you, you you're placing on different planets or or orbitals, and 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 as they return, they go back to those spots on on your on your board. There are, lots of games have tried to emulate uh, you know having um, you know different incomes, you know having a, a, a you know research income or science income, having uh, a production income and having a money income, and and and. A lot of them do really well, you know, with like a graph or something like that. But this works perfectly. You're taking these little cubes, you're placing them on the board, you know, you're, you're basically taking over certain things, you're controlling them, you're saying, these are where my people are. But at the same time, it also very, very plainly shows you on your little player board how much more money you're going to be making, how much more you're going to be producing, uh, you know, how, what your research is at. It just, it, it's just nice and it's slick. I mean... Then taking the fact that, you know, one thing about the games like this that could be really bad is, is downtime if you have too many people and, like, a big combat occurs. You know, it's like, so these two people now are going to roll bucket loads of dice and they're going to just take turns bashing each other until one's left. But that never really happens in this game due to the fact that you, you're not really able to move a ton of ships all at once due to the fact that there's that limitation on them and, you know, on the move action. And, and plus, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's almost like um, when the combat does occur, it, it's very, it's very quick. You, you figure out the initiative for each one of the ships, and, and then you just roll your dice. And it's just like, and you know, just roll, 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 done. Okay, you were treating? No. Okay, roll, 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 done. You know, and a comment that would, in lots of other different games that are like this genre, would, that would take 15 minutes to figure out, to plot out, and everything like that, can take less than five and it's just and i like that is it is it the most is is it the most accurate representation of combat well probably not maybe it is dumbed down a little bit but it works perfectly for this game 
I love the the fact that they have. I, I mean, the game really shines at four people, in my opinion, because it's the perfect number. You actually have, um, you know, you get to use uh, your ambassadors, so you have that negotiation tactic going on, and and plus, but there isn't a ton of people, so it's like, you know, you don't have that angst as you're waiting for your turn to come around. It's like, oh come on, I need to be able to do something. I hope this guy doesn't do this. I hope that guy doesn't do that. And but. Yeah, but still, six is still a fun game. It's still a great game at six. But I mean, I think four is a sweet spot. But and I, and like I was referring to, I, I love the negotiation. I love the fact that like you're kind of counting on, you know, it's one thing to tell a guy just, hey, you don't attack me, I won't attack you. But it's another thing to say, hey, look, I'm, I'll give you my ambassador, and you give me your ambassador. We'll be able to put our pop a population cube in there, and we'll actually make us stronger. To have this going on between the two of us, and also if the other person then backstabs us, they're going to get that trader card, which is worth negative points at the end of the game. You know, so it, it's nice to have that, and also it makes it so you know maybe you're not going to go into it with somebody. You know, you've got to pick your friend wisely. You don't want to pick the guy that's the scrub, and then later on it's just like, oh great, I'm allied with this idiot. You know, and and you know, and and, and I can't. I, everybody else is beating the heck out of him and taking you know sectors of space from but I can't now because I don't want to get that stupid trader card. You know, it's it's it the game is so multifaceted that I I'm so impressed by the design and how how slick and how perfectly it works. You know, I love the fact that it's nine turns long. I mean lots of games have time limits and tons of games have time limits. But I love the fact that like you know, every game is kind of the same. Like the, you know and I that's not a bad thing because every because the game is different, obviously, because the different tiles and everything. But it's like the first couple of turns, everybody's just kind of tr looking around, trying to find out what's around them, trying to get what the technologies they want, trying to get you know their production going the way they want. And after like turn three or four, um, you kind of have a good idea of where you're at as far as your victory point totals are. And but and you've been kind of trying to keep track of the people. You know, some of those victory points are hidden from you, so you're just kind of like, oh, I wonder where that person is. By turn five or six, you got a pretty good idea about who's in the lead and who isn't. And you know that person that's in the lead is starting to think, okay, what do I need to protect? What do, what do I need to, to keep uh, the other people from like you know taking from me so I can maintain this lead? And the other people are like, oh, okay, we gotta we gotta get this guy, we gotta knock him down. But I need to put myself in a position to, to take over that first spot. And then you know by turn seven or eight, you know all 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 bars have just been thrown. There's no holes bar at that point. You know, it's just like, it just becomes a slugfest. And it just, you know, the the perceived leader is, is on every end, he's, he's, they're, they're running into combat, they're running into people, like, trying to knock them down a peg. And then everybody else is scrabbling for, like, whatever space sectors they possibly can just to add more to the, that, that victory point total and see who wins. I've had more than one game come down to the very last turn and the very last actions and the very last things that everybody does, and it, and it it's it's always a nail biter, and it's it's full of tense moments and full of full of lots of excitement. And the game just it tells a story. I love games that tell a story. I, when I sit down at my table with my gaming group and I have a great gaming group, everybody you know they they act out what's going on. You know we're quoting uh, you know science fiction movies as we play the game, and it's just it's just a hell of a lot of fun to play. I, basically, if if you have it, you know it. If you haven't played it yet, why haven't you? If you don't have it and you're on the fence, um, if you're at all a fan of of the old Master of Orion games and and, and you're a fan of, of of that theme, that Galactic Conquest theme, this this game is a must buy. I I, I can't see this game uh, not appealing to that that player. Um, you know. The only people I can't see that this appealing to um, would be very, very, very strict abstract players or very, very strict people that um, do not want conflict. You know, they, they do not want to have head-to-head, -head, you know, which, which is a thing, because the game is kind of like building a resource engine, you know, and lots of games are about that, you know, building up that little engine that's going to create your victory point. This is a lot, this is a lot like that. You're trying to, you know, claim sectors. You're trying to, like, make your empire better so then you can do the things that you need to do to make more victory points. The difference 
is that a lot of those Euros that you play with that, there's nothing you can do. You know, like, oh, he's got a better engine than me, he's got better cards, he made better choices. Uh, all I can do is just hopefully, you know, catch up. In this game, you know, if somebody's doing better than you, you don't just catch up. You you fly in with your dreadnoughts and blast them with your plasma cannons and and and, and hope you roll sixes when you roll the dice. Because hey, and and who doesn't like that? The best laid plans can can luck can take those away. And you know what? And and a lot of people, there's a lot of luck in the game because you're drawing tiles and 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 you're you're rolling dice and stuff like that. But hey. Going into this game, if you didn't realize that there was going to be a little bit of chaos to go with your strategy, um, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, you must have just gone in with your eyes closed or something like that. So, anyway, Eclipse. Um, I'm not going to tell you whether or not it's my game of the year. It's it's definitely in my top ten, and it's very high in my top ten. Um, but if I told you that, I'd be giving away my next video. So. It's an amazing game. Um, I'm so glad I won it. Uh, I will play this game tons of times. Uh, I will wear this game out, uh, much like I've, I've worn out like my Battlestar Galactica game because it's just a game I love, um, and I had to replace it. And hopefully, I won't, I won't wear this one out before I have to replace it before the next reprint comes out. So, um, all honesty, the only thing I don't, uh, I'm kind of annoyed about as far as this game goes is the fact that there's like uh, a little mini expansion called like the Supernova expansion. I can't find it anywhere. So if you're watching this video and you have like an extra copy of that and you want to like drop me a line and I can pay postage or something and you you could have the undying thanks of, of, of me, the Undead Viking, if you could get that in my hands because I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, usually I don't have to have every expansion but for this game I'm going to want to get everything that comes out for it because I just I, I, I can see this game more more uh, more resources more more uh, um, scientific breakthroughs uh, more tiles more ships uh, you know more races uh, you know just I can see this game being expanded and, and ma being made even more epic than it already is so there you go uh, that's my last uh, board game review of 2011. Thank you very much for all of the times that you clicked on one of my videos and watched it. And thank you very much uh, for sitting through this review and listening to it and hearing what I have to say. Um, if you have any questions or comments, by all means, leave them. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, just I really, I'll, I'll go into this more uh, with my, uh, my, my year in review thing, but I really, really appreciate you uh, uh, taking the time to watch me uh, uh, do my thing like I do right here so all right well, all my best goes out to all of you and until next time uh, this is under the you take care